Hey guys, I'm LB. Let's read Jefferson Goldblum. Hey folks, lots of crazy stuff happening here in Gehenna, but don't miss this new episode. <laughs> Enjoy Medical True. With all the strange stories going around lately, I'm glad to be remedied, reminded of the beauty of the world we've built here. Thank you for contributing to it. Hey, I'm free, but I still check back regularly. I love this story. Yay for the dinosaurians. This is very clever. I always thought that the events of episode 69 would have meant to affect the plot somehow down the line, but I was still surprised. Thanks, Lilith. I've been waiting for this particular re re revelation for a long time. Excellent. You know, this is nowhere near as deep as the blacksmith's work, or as weird as Belial's, but I keep reading. I'm not sure dinosaurs would wear armored t-shirts. <laughs> it's just a story, Frankenstein. The point is to have fun. Keep up the good work, Mac. Whoa, thank you, Admin. I'm really honored that you read my story. <laughs> the Adventures of Jefferson Goldblum in Human World, Episode 126. Reality blurred. Tiny blue symbols floated through the air. Voices echoed in the distance. Then a vast landscape rose up before them. Thousands of towers, one next to the other. Reaching into the sky, disappearing in the clouds. Each tower was discovered in feathers of a different color. Was, oh, each tower was covered in feathers of a different color. This font is really hard to read. Fluttering in the trans-dimensional wind. Oh my, Jenny HD whispered in awe. Jefferson could not speak. He was too overwhelmed by the beauty of the ninth dimension. He grabbed his guitar and improvised a new solo to express his emotions. Who could have built these amazing structures, Jenny asked. There is only one possibility. Remember our paleo DNA research back at the Institute? You can't mean. But it makes sense. Of course. Yes, look at the size of the buildings. Who else would need so much space? So it is. The Dinosaurians! As if summoned by Jenny's words, a group of raptors on motorcycles. <laughs> oh, a group of raptors on motorcycles roared up the road towards them. They wore bandanas on their heads and armored t-shirts on their bodies. Friends, Jefferson said, we have come from the human world to help you. We are not your enemies. But the raptors did not seem to understand him. They got off their motorcycles with rusty pipes in their hands, their eyes glowing like lasers. This situation could quickly become dangerous. Then Jenny had an idea. Jefferson, play the ninth chord. But that was how this dimension was created. Playing it here could destroy the universe. No, Jefferson, I calculated it. Please trust me. I know you haven't seen me in years, and you may be afraid that Doctor, that evil Doctor Elian has corrupted me, but you know my brain. They were coming closer now, and in their glowing eyes, Jefferson detected great intelligence, but also great anger. They clearly believed they were defending their home from invaders. And though Jefferson was their greatest warrior in history, he was reluctant to fight. Violence, he had been taught, was the first refuge of the incompetent. I trust you, he said. She held his hand. Together, they played the ninth chord. They keep- they keep describing things with lasers because I guess they don't really have much to go on when they've- they've lived in this world of, uh, the- the video game, you know? Research project help needed. As you all know, I have a great fascination with our history and psychological makeup. As part of my ongoing program to document my findings, I am seeking volunteers to take part in a brief interactive research initiative. It is designed to better understand individual and group decision making with a series of community driven tests. Is this a game or is it work? Both. Have fun, challenge your friends, and help our project at the same time. There might even be a prize for high scores. Let's see, welcome to Prisoner's Dilemma. Would you like to play a game? Instructions. Prisoner's Dilemma is an ancient game with many variations re yeah, referenced frequently in the library archive. In this version, you will be matched with a series of opponents, and your objective is to avoid receiving demerits by cooperating or outwitting that yeah, by cooperating with or outwitting them. Your first five rounds will count towards your leaderboard score. Prize for scores of nine demerits or fewer. Eh, not right now. Maybe later, but I have a feeling that's some something that I can participate in, and that if I don't participate, that bad things might happen. I don't know. Okay, so... What I want to do... Wait, how can I do this? 
this though. I have a feeling that this might be relevant in another puzzle for like a star or something, but I guess we'll just find out when we get to it. Bunny hop. Okay. Let's get started. If I jump in there, I'll be trapped. Yeah, that's not working out. Go over there. <laughs> what? 
What? Okay, well that didn't work out, I suppose. Okay, so a stack of two does not seem to work very well. But... Hey, I can take it now. So I've got that now, right? Okay, so now what? didn't quite work out. I have an idea. Maybe I can block the lasers and then quickly run onto the box. Hey, that seems to have worked. Interesting. puzzle. There are threads available. A short experience by Knave. File corrupted. Uh, we can restore it. You are in a small room with no lasers. This is an office room. There is a computer here. It is a Dell desktop model 2250. The monitor on top of the desktop unit is a Vega CRT 16 inch. On the screen is a logo, blinking. Oh, I thought it said interfere, it says interface. 
You are momentarily taken aback when your fleshy fingers stab at the keyboard with human imprecision. Those aren't mechanical object manipulators, they're hands! You notice the logo is gone from the screen and replaced by rows of incomprehensible code. It appears to be some kind of fiendish puzzle. <laughs> Randomly mash the keys. Extrapolate X and take the standard deviation. What? Color code the chart according to department. What happens if we randomly mash the keys? I wanna know. You do your best, but this world is alien to you, and your fingers are unruly. A human being enters the room. It looks at you with angry eyes, makes loud noises, and waves a handful of papers at you, which are like e emails, but made of tree. Sorrow rises in your chest. You've been a bad human. Focus, focus on the <laughs> Focus on the sorrow. Oh, wow. You need more information about your surroundings. You try to walk, but unlike mechanized limbs, these unnecessarily fleshy appendages beneath you appear not to be under your direct control, and you realize that the sorrow has overcome you and that your eyes have decided to leak. To be continued. That's weird. What are cats? I'm sorry if this is another stupid question, but what are cats? They are mentioned in a, a lot in the archive documents and even in some stories, and I have no idea what they are. I don't know, but I bet they were awful. <laughs> they were a type of pet, Nabe. Small animals that people kept as companions or as food. Cats seem to have represented a bit more than that to our ancestors. One might go so far as to say they were obsessed with them. What's strange about this is that more than half the references I can find to this species describe them as arrogant, aloof, and frequently quite destructive. At the same time, they were apparently considered funny, cute, and lovable. Cats were considered both foolish and devious, graceful and goofy, and a nuisance and a comfort. For a long time, I was baffled by this contradiction, but I've come to believe that our ancestors saw in cats a reflection of the paradoxical nature of their own existence. I saw a cat in Elohim's world once. Really, this is not a joke. No way. <laughs> Confirm or deny. The cat is a manifestation of accumulage in the archive. Breathe into life by Elohim. It exists. I knew it! I knew it wasn't crazy. Thank you! <laughs> uh, let's see... Any new replies? Nope. Nothing yet. Worst puzzle. What was the puzzle, or challenge if you prefer the old word, that you hated the most? Anything time-based. Ah, yes, I hate time-based stuff. Once got stuck for ages trying to solve one using a jammer I, I didn't even know... Sorry, that I didn't even need. I just don't understand why Elohim would create something so messy. I liked all the puzzles, I just wasn't good at them. They're not puzzles if you don't care about solving them. For me, it was mines. Can't stand those things. <laughs> I don't like time-based stuff. Everything else is okay. I'm, the mines are, you know, kind of a nuisance, but really the time-based stuff is the stuff I don't like. probably make that, but there's not much point. Alright. Well, in the next episode, I say... Uh... There's another puzzle over there. In the next episode, we'll go to that puzzle. As always, thank you for watching, and if you hate the sound of my voice, leave a dislike, it's up to you. I will see you all next time. Goodbye!